There really are only two macro level motivators that we have in life and that's pleasure and pain. Mm. And so what I want people to understand is, okay, so if nature only gave you two things to motivate you, pleasure and pain, why would you eliminate half of them? Mm. And so most people think that life is about avoiding the pain. I'm here to tell you right now in a very controlled fashion, it is about really experiencing the pain learning from it. So Ray Dalio, the most successful hedge fund manager of all time, mm -hmm. has a perfect math equation. Pain plus reflection equals progress. Mm -hmm. If you don't feel the pain, you never reflect on it. So my thing is I spend 80% of my time focused on the beautiful things in my life, the things I'm grateful for, the beautiful things that I want to bring into existence, all of it. 20% of the time though, I'm in the darkness, man. I'm in that Tim Grover, relentless, I'm going to make this happen if I have to break myself and I'm not afraid to lean into that because I know how powerful it is. Mm. Now, if you really wanna put numbers how powerful this, this is, they did a study and they wanted to find out what happens, how can we get people to endure more pain? Mm. And the punchline is hilarious. So they would take people and they would submerge their arm in a bucket of ice and they would just hold it there as long as you can. Now at first it's just cold, but after a while it really starts to hurt. Yeah. And so people would end up yanking their arms out. They found that people could hold their um, arm in the bucket 35% longer if you let them display anger. So put it in, they get to that point where they're about to pull it out and you tell them, yell, cuss, do whatever you need to, and they'd be able to do it. Mm. They're, the expression of intensity, even what I'm doing right now, yeah. I can feel myself yeah. ready, right? I'm ready to strike, my muscles are tense, I've got a different posture, mm. I bring my chin down, there's intensity in my eyes. Mm. Like, dude, I'm now feeling that because yeah. I'm, I'm so embodying much. it, right? Yeah. So it makes me really feel that. Mm. And so I actually started to tell the story earlier, I hate the gym. But what I would do to make myself work out is I would, my wife would be on the opposite side of the gym and I would stare at her and I would imagine her being attacked. And I would imagine her being attacked by people bigger than me and that the only way that I could fight them off was to get stronger. So there was mm. nothing beautiful in it. I was mm. not worried about aesthetics. I was worried about saving my wife. Mm. And by stepping into that dark place and because people were like, what are you doing? Yeah. But dude, that was, I needed that motivation to push past what I want, to push past pain, boredom, all of it, and just to really get into it and get a result. Mm. But I find that people shy away from that. Look, to me, it's an 80-20 split. If you're spending more than 20% of your time there, it will be corrosive. Yes. It will start to erode your sense of self because you're gonna feel badly, right? Because I would be saying to myself, you're weak, come on, like yep. you've gotta get stronger. If you spend 80% of your time doing that, yes. that sucks. Yes. I don't wanna live like that. Right. But not being able to dip into both, you'll just never hit the level of extraordinary. You may be fine, you may yep. be, even be good, yep. but you're never gonna be great. You know, at this core of what we are is just like pure possibility. Like we can, we can move in many directions with our, with the kind of inborn talents of what it means to be a human being, okay? So there's poor, core possibility. Outside of that creates what I call this kind of core drivers layer. Core drivers are things that you've that are that you've attached yourself to and that are attached to you because of your your race, your religion, your values, um, where you're from. Because people don't realize just how much that stuff shapes them. Mm. You know, uh, well, I'm black, so that means that this, or I'm white and that means this, or I'm Asian, or I'm a Catholic, or I'm a Jew, or I'm a core driver sit there. Um, and again, even being a part of a larger group, what like military man, police officer, you know, this. So we, we have these labels and now, because we, they're, they're the things that really can help either block someone's possibility or, you know, unleash it in many ways. Mm. We see it at the Olympics where someone who's coming out of nowhere, but now because they're wearing the, you know, the red, white, and blue on their back or the red and white from Canada or the wherever from somewhere else, they just level up because of what it means to now represent their country. Other people, conversely, I can't use it with them because I've worked with you know well over 100 Olympians. That actually crushes their performance. Because it's just too much weight? It's too much. Or they actually don't care. Hmm. Some people don't care. Like it's That's not meaningful to them that they're an American or a Canadian or a Brit or an Aussie, whatever the case. So, so that's the core drivers. And then outside of that, I call it the belief layer. So that's where your attitudes, your perceptions, um, your beliefs about you or the world around you sit. Okay, this is all shaping that identity and it's shaping it in the different areas of our life in the roles that we play, that of an entrepreneur, that of a, a parent, father, husband, wife, you know, lover, brother, sister, mom, like all those we have. And that's why it's important that we sort of peel away the layer or peel away and show that, no, you've got many identities and we can shape you. No, you get to shape yourself because you're doing it anyway. 
I'm not, I'm not explaining anything to anyone that is not grounded in gravity. Like it's real, it's truth. We have many identities. Mm. We just don't think about it. But I'm trying to build awareness so that people can see it and they go, oh. Because once you build the awareness, all bets are off with people. Because now human beings are uh, are grounded in rituals and there is an, it's almost like an honoring ceremony. Because what I want you to do is I want you to, I don't want you to dishonor the memory or the spirit of whatever or whoever it is that you are activating by not truly acting through the qualities of that individual. It, it, it helps to send a signal through your entire electrical system that something different is happening. Now, I want people to track this. Are there some things that you've got some internal combustion over right now that you're resisting against because you have a tough time seeing yourself do it despite the fact that you want to manifest it. You want to pursue that entrepreneurial career. You want to pursue that acting or that singing or you want to get out there.